We are going to enter our first discussion, which is very interesting. Something that I personally have never experienced, but my colleague Ralphie has experienced it quite often. Oh, said? numerous of times. Wow. So we're talking about sleep paralysis. So at least once or twice people experience it in their lifetime, while some others may experience it several times more a month or even more frequently or more regularly. Well, despite this condition being common, one may feel unsettled or anxious about returning to sleep. So often, sleep paralysis is considered as a disconcerting mm. occurrence. Some may associate it with supernatural, yes. supernatural, yes. not supernatural, eh? supernatural. supernatural experiences <laughs> or hallucinations, yes. such as sensations of being pushed down. Yeah. And many in Indonesia refer it as uh, rap, rap or ketindihan. Ketindihan. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, to delve deeper into the sleep paralysis, mm -hmm. we are now joined by Dr. Anya Lirya Susanto, a neurologist from Siloam Hospital. Good morning, Dr. Good morning. Anya. Good morning, Dr. Anya. Thank you for joining us today on this lovely yeah. Thursday morning. Yes. So, we're here to mm -hmm. talk about sleep paralysis. Mm, exactly. What is it? What is so, sleep paralysis? Yeah, basically we have what we call sleep cycle. Mm. So it consists of several stages. From the very first time you are falling asleep and then go to the light sleep, deep sleep and go up again until you are truly awake. Mm -hmm. okay. In sleep paralysis, it's a disorder yes. in which you are suddenly awake, which you are children actually. Ah. So it appears at the moment you are just falling asleep mm -hmm. or before you are supposed to be fully awake. So before oh. mm -hmm. falling asleep into the light sleep first? Yes, true. And then? And then oh, at the very end. At the very, very end, when you're about cycle. to wake up, yes. you experience sleep paralysis. Yes, true. What's causing it, Doc? So sleep paralysis, uh, the exact causes actually is unknown. Right. It's unknown until yes, now. Yes, okay. until now it's unknown. But more and more research stated that it related to mental health problems. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other serious sleep problems, uh -huh. such as uh, like uh, we call insomnia, okay. or oh. lack of sleep, or difficulty to go sleeping. Yes, and also related to snoring because snoring is also a serious sleep disorder. Is it what you call mm -hmm. sleep apnea, John? Yes, true. Snoring. Snoring because sleep apnea means that you are stop breathing mm -hmm. during your sleep, Oof. but the first sign that you could notice is snoring. Right. Because most of us, I think, yeah, we have relatives or families or even uh, ourselves. ourselves. Maybe yes. we have snoring yes. during sleep. I snore a lot life. too. Yes. So, yes. so can sleep paralysis mm -hmm. or sleep apnea that Marissa just mentioned could be a symptom of a more serious uh, neurological condition? Uh, basically, yes. Okay. Uh, because sleep paralysis is like the end of something. It's like the sign of symptoms or something more serious. Something is common, which is like insomnia, yeah. uh, the sleep apnea, and also mental health problems like anxiety or depression. Okay. Right. Or the usage right. of kind of like narcotic drugs, oh, okay. or excessive consumption of alcohol, mm -hmm. caffeine, and smoking. Okay. That too. So, what is is there any treatments? Because, yeah, any treatment for um, this condition? Yeah, for the treatment, actually, we have to consider it back to the first diagnosis. What is the main causes in this person, in these patients? What about for a person who is currently going through something difficult and thus creating anxiety? Ah, oh, okay. If the, if the root is anxiety, so we have to counter the anxiety first. Mm -hmm. We could use the medication mm -hmm. for yes. the anti-anxiety drugs. Okay. Okay. And also we have like what we call cognitive behavior therapy. Yes. So it's like basically consulting. Consulting yeah. and discuss about your problems, how to cope with it, mm -hmm. and how to solve and live with it actually. Because everyone yeah. has problems, right? Of course. Correct. Right. Of course. And of it's course. also like I, I also learned uh, a little bit about mm -hmm. cognitive behavioral therapy for myself. Oh, cool. It's okay. basically you challenge yourself because mm -hmm. oftentimes our minds can go to places that are unhelpful for us, mm -hmm. you know, like negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what I do when that happened is that I try to be my own friend oh. by saying, is that true? Yeah. Is what you're thinking true or not? Uh, 
And if it's not true, why is it not true? And then you just try to Listen like down. have, yeah, mm -hmm. you try to have conversation with yourself. So oh, that's, that's one, that's right? Yeah. Helps, yeah. That's very helpful. Like and what about sleep? exercise, right? Exactly. Yes. And what about for those who, oh, you talk about medication as yeah. well. Oh yes, medication. Yeah. I'm interested because I do have some friends who have experienced uh, sleeping difficulty or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, like what type of medication can we use as a solution for mm -hmm. for Katindian or what do you call it? Sleep Sli paralysis. paralysis. Uh, yes. Yeah. Sleep paralysis. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have any current exact etiologies like anxiety yeah. or maybe depression or yeah. other mental health issues. Yeah. What about snoring? Right? Uh, about snoring, if we talk about snoring first, we have to diagnose what is the problem. Because mostly the problem is the obstruction in yes. your airway passage, right? Mm. Okay. So you have to clear the obstruction. Mm. Like maybe you have like a deviations in your nose bone. I see. You have to correct okay. it. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like a cosmetic surgery, not, but yeah. it's uh, for the medical use because yeah. snoring can lead to many serious problems. Oh, yes, like oh. deviated yeah. septum is the inside, right? Yes, yes. exactly. Sure. Seems like very simple, but yeah. it could lead us to something serious, even stroke or like heart problems. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay, so for those of you who are watching and you think you snore when you sleep, uh, including this guy who has two thumbs, <laughs> go to the doctor. I snore. I really? snore. Yes, a lot. Well, you better get that checked, my yes, friend. Yes, thank you yeah. very much for coming mm -hmm. here. Check it. Makes mm -hmm. me a little bit concerned. Mm -hmm. But this is an interesting <laughs> question. So, whenever I experience sleep paralysis, mm -hmm. it's always something, uh, you know, scary. Or horror wise. Do you feel scared when I you experience scared. it? What do you feel when you experience sleep paralysis? So this paralysis? is what I feel uh, when I had sleep paralysis mm. uh, a couple of times. Yes. So this was back, I think a year ago. Mm -hmm. I was laying down in my bed. Yes. I can open my eyes. Uh -huh. I, I'm still in my room, mm -hmm. same position. But I think there's a a thing looking at right at me. What? Oh. Are you being? Are I'm, you being? I'm not being one. Are you Something being scary? Are you, were you hallucinating? I'm not hallucinating. So, but I feel this, uh, just this thing, this black big thing looking at me, and I can't move a, ah. a bit. I can't even move a single part of my body part. How did that make you feel? I was, Terrified. my heart was racing, mm. but then I tried to get. Wake up, Ralvi. Wake up, Ralvi. I know this is not real. I know this is not real. Ralvi, wake up. And then suddenly I just open my eyes and, and I'm move. still in my room, but uh -huh. there's nothing there. But could you move your body? I can move there? my body. But it was like a yeah. challenge for yeah. myself to move my so body. So what to do when so you what, experience yes. that? What do you usually do? Because obviously the heart beating super fast mm -hmm. means that he was panicking. Yes. yes. So what should one do when they experience sleep paralysis? Yeah, it could be very frightening mm -hmm. yeah. because basically you feel very real that it's hallucinations. Ooh. Sadly, the hallucination mostly is something like very scary, like intruder hallucinations. Exactly. Or what we call incubus hallucinations What's that, that you feel like press, something press your body. Mm. Yeah. Something sleep uh, just above you that's very scary. Or you feel like flying sensation, but in a bad way. Oh. That you are just flying away with no direction. Mm -hmm. I think wow. like in the space. I think it could be frightening for some people. Right. Okay. So what you do is very true. The first one is to confirm, to reassure yourself by using the CBT, the Cognitive Behavioral <laughs> Therapy, yeah. to tell yourself that it is not real. Yeah. Yes. And you have to, to wake up as soon as possible because the only solution is to wake up. Yeah. Just to get out of your sleep cycle as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And then your brain will tell and command your body to move again. Because yeah. somehow, even mm -hmm. when I was sleeping, I know that yeah. it's not real. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I can actually be mm -hmm. aware and force to open my eyes. Yes. True. Okay, so yeah, that's one way to uh, handle sleep Smart paralysis. Move. Smart Thank move. you very much, doctor. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, can sleep paralysis worsen over time, Doc? Mm -hmm. If yes. it's not treated? Yes, if it's not treated and if it's like just only one symptom of other serious condi conditions. Yes. So you have to treat it as soon as possible. Okay. Right. Because like, maybe actually the main root is depression. Let's say the main root is depression, mm -hmm. but you complain about sleep paralysis. If yeah. you keep just keep going in the circle and think only about the sleep paralysis, yeah. 
and forget about the depression, yeah. it will getting worse over time, for real, for sure. Okay. So sleep paralysis is actually a symptom of something yes. more serious like, that we actually need to investigate. True, like you are coughing yeah. because mm -hmm. of some kind of virus or bacteria. Yeah, yeah. This is like just the cough, just yeah. the symptoms, uh, yes. not the main reason of anything else. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so it cannot resolve on its own. Uh, if it's something that temporary, like mm -hmm. mm, for example, you have a temporary changes in your sleep cycle or sleep habit. Mm -mm. Uh, for instance, like you have shift work, mm -hmm. and then you go abroad with different oh, time zone. Usually, yeah, when like, you're when you're overly exhausted, sleep yeah. sleep paralyzing can also happen. Yes. Okay. But so if that's temporary. the case, uh, it can resolve on its own. Mm -hmm. But yes. if it happens. Throughout mm -hmm. every week, mm -hmm. once a week, it happens too many times. Mm -hmm. You should probably go check that out. Yes, that must be. There must be something. Okay. So I think the alarm sign is that if the sleep paralysis um, makes you feel like bad quality of life, mm -hmm. yes. makes you feel very afraid to sleep, and wow. you are unable to act, uh, do your daily activities well yeah. because you are very. Very sleepy, right? Yeah, if you don't yeah. have like a good quality of sleep, no. you should check. Okay. You better check. So, if someone experiences um, sleep paralysis and when it's too often, they should go to a neurologist instead. Yes. Okay. Okay. A neurologist. So we need to remember this, guys. A neurologist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So go to a state of specialist, a neurologist. Mm -hmm. If you are having problems with your sleep, especially if you have sleep paralysis and you think it's happening too often, go to a neurologist because this is just a symptom. Just, just like Dr. Anya said, mm -hmm. it's it's just the cuff. Yes. Yeah. yes, but it's not the main root, it's not the main cause of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Thank Anya, much, Dr. Sure, sure. for such an insightful discussion because wow. this is the first time I've I... actually ever discussed about sleep paralysis because yeah. I guess maybe yeah. I've never experienced it, but I remember mm -hmm. years ago when my uh, big brother was mm -hmm. a teenager and I was younger, I was 12 and he was 15, and he said to me, we were staying at our cousin's house <laughs> And our cousin, the father, had this kris, right? Ooh. You know, kris is this dagger, this Javanese dagger that we have in Indonesia. And then he said, oh my goodness, I was experiencing, at that time he said, ketindian or sleep paralysis. I think it's probably because of the kris next to me. I was <laughs> sleeping in front of a kris and I'm like, Really, bro? Okay. <laughs> you know, it's actually a medical condition. It's, it's, it is a medical condition. Yeah, it is. Right, it is, yes. Right. And it, 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 it's solvable, so don't worry about it. Thank you so much. Thank again, you Dr. very Ryan. much, Dr. Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> Thank you very much for just being here. And this is actually the first time I talked to a doctor about <laughs> yeah. sleep paralysis. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you very much. Now yeah. I know more about it and yeah. what to do about it. Exactly. Yeah. And you. hopefully you. you also know what to do about it if you're experiencing sleep paralysis. And now it's time for our break. We'll come back with more updates from around the world. Stay tuned. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Anya. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anya. Thank you, yeah. <laughs>